Tom Clark's main event is a Boink Studios production. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Boink Studios. And check us out on boinkstudios.com where you can see all of our projects, past, present, and future. And now, on with the show. This is Daddy's show. Step off. <laughs> Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome back to the program, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tom Clark, and this is Tom Clark's Main Event. We're back once again here on Facebook Live. Glad you are with us. We're also recording today. The show will post on YouTube and is always available on boinkstudios.com. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, and iHeartRadio. This is episode number 132, and yes, we're moving right along here on Facebook Live. I want to thank everyone for joining us here, of course, and for coming back each and every week. Much thanks to Heidi Ryan and the whole crew at Wrestling Rumors for giving us this platform. We do greatly appreciate it. So episode number 131 was the Friday free-for-all number two. We just let it fly and let it hit all the high spots, pun intended. We talked about WrestleMania and a whole bunch of other stuff, but now it's on to the biggest weekend of the year. Are you excited? Are you jacked? Are you stoked? Are you pumped? Are you ready? Are you thrilled? Are you awesome? Let's do this, folks. This is WrestleMania weekend, and this time, the main event is the WrestleMania 35 TakeOver and G1 Supercard Preview, and I've got a headache already. It's a lot of wrestling to get to, but I love it! Thank you, Matthew, for the great words. How's everyone doing out there in WWE land, a pro wrestling land? Yours truly is doing awesome. Before we went live, I touched on a few things here. I t- actually talked about the fact that I watched the WrestleCon event last night. It was a good event. They had some technical difficulties, but all in all, it was a good show. I'm, I don't care much for the comedy, and I don't want to sound old-fashioned. This coming from the dude with the gray in his beard, okay? I, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm just saying, I'm not crazy about all the comedy. The Orange Cassidy stuff, I could, I could definitely leave that. It's like, I could tell you or leave it. I could leave it. It's too much for me. And I know wrestling is supposed to be fun and blah, 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 blah. But I'm, I just, it's not for me. I, this, you know, when you're in the ring, it should be, let's do this. Uh, and if a guy sticks his hand in his pockets in front of you in the ring, you should take his head off. Um, because he's not defending himself. Why would you play along with that? It's wrestling. What are you going to do? So. Uh, Matt can tell you, dude, have no idea. Uh, so listen, I hope you enjoy this show. We're going to try to make you entertain you here, right? Make you laugh, make you cry. Maybe not make you cry. (laughs) It kind of goes hand in hand, doesn't it? Isn't that funny how cry usually follows laugh? It's never make you cry, make you laugh. It's always laugh and cry. Are you still with me? I hope so. All right, man. So, uh, um, uh, loyal fan, no matter what, Robbie, I hear you there. What's up, Joseph? So I hope every or, uh, Jason, yeah, Jason. Sorry, man. Uh, so I hope everyone's okay out there. Um, hope everyone's looking forward to this. Hope you got your rest because the sleep's over now. The sleep's over for you, boy. I don't sleep from this point on, man. I got the entire weekend off to do nothing but the writing. I woke up this morning. I wrote uh, two pieces. Wrote another one a few minutes ago. I'm doing the podcast now. Tonight I'll probably put up um, anywhere from five to ten pieces tonight. Quick shots about the takeover show. I'm on board tomorrow night writing about the G1 Supercard in Madison Square Garden. And of course, I'm going to write during WrestleMania on the 35 on Sunday. Good weekend. Huge weekend for you boys. So, uh, Jenna, you asked me about selling debate between you and your mom. Hit me with it when you got a chance there. Um, uh, Paul, you're awesome. Thanks, man. So, yeah, the go-home shows. How do we feel about it? What's up, folks? How do we feel about it? Um, uh, the go-home show for Ron Smackdown wasn't uh, quite what we thought it would be. Um, by, by quite not what we thought it would be. That is to say, it was not very good. I'm trying to move the mic around, folks. Bear with me just for a second. So, um, uh, no, no news about where, uh, um, uh, Ambrose is heading to. We've been talking about that for the better part of six months. It feels like ever since the thing was announced, um, Patrick's going to Mania. Patrick, have the best time ever. Any of you guys out there, guys and gals going to Mania, please have a safe and fun event. Um, take all kinds of pictures and, uh, hope you can have a great view and everything. And please, uh, go on Facebook and tag all of us, man. I'm interested to see what happens. Um, her all was so terrible. It was actually entertaining. Boy, a lot of people are feeling like that. I don't know if I've heard it put that way. Um, uh, but yeah, so, um, 
Yeah, both weak, very weak. I expected more from WWE, but you know what, folks? I didn't lose any sleep over, didn't get any heartburn, don't care. Um, there's a lot more going on just this weekend than Mania, and I know Mania is the big dog, and it's, you know, no pun intended and all that other stuff, but a lot of other wrestling to consume this weekend. So uh, WrestleMania is going to be a huge part of it, of course. It's the grand finale of the weekend. And rightfully so, yes, but, um, you know, there's a lot of other cool stuff to watch. Jim Ross has signed a W. Naman, 100% true. Uh, supposedly the most lucrative deal that a bread person commentator has ever signed. If he can't sign that deal now after spending 30 years in the business, when can he sign it? So, good for Jim. I can't tell you that I am totally in the bag for Jim in 2019 as a commentator. I, I can't really tell you that, and it's no disrespect to him, and I'm not crapping on him or his ability whatsoever. But I've heard a lot of his work on the New Japan show, and I just, you know, shows, and I just, I'm just, eh, I'm kind of indifferent to it. No disrespect intended. Um, no, I think Taker shows up as Taker. Uh, that's just my opinion. Um, Ray so far is still going to work. Uh, Ray has teased that he's got his WrestleMania gear. All the guys' gear is there, right? So AJ said the same thing. Uh, Ray's gear is supposedly pretty awesome this year, but it always is, right? So um, uh, as of this moment, he is still there. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, bu- 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 well, Dan, you got to remember, man, that whole segment with the ladies, I would guess and say it was produced and shot ahead of time. Uh, that's my guess, right? Uh, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I was guess that the stuff with the cars was shot ahead of time, but that's just me talking. Okay, folks, we've got a lot to get into. Uh, I would I would love to give uh, give you a bunch of question and answers right now, but we got a lot of stuff to cover, a lot of ground to cover. We're going to start off with tonight's show that I'm very pumped to see, and the good news is it's not a huge card, but it's a massive card nonetheless in terms of content, maybe not... Uh, 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 number, but content as well. So here we go. Uh, NXT TakeOver New York. We're going to run through the matches and then talk about them, okay? So Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole. This is the big daddy. This is one we're all talking about. Two out of three falls match for the vacant NXT Championship. A lot of people are suggesting that this is going to absolutely steal the show during WrestleMania 35 weekend. I'm inclined to agree with that. Um, Devin, uh, the Hall of Fame is not on USA on Saturday because they don't want to compete head-to-head with the G1 Supercard and Madison Square Garden. Uh, simple answer. They they just they don't want to do it, and it's smart business. However, I think the Hall of Fame is supposed to take place after Monday Night Raw on USA Network. I believe is where it's going to happen. Maybe it's on maybe it's on WWE Network. I've not really looked up on that yet. Um, so yeah, Adam Cole, baby. So we'll see. Uh, Rebecca says Johnny for the win with help from his wife. I say Johnny gets the win with no help from anybody. Um, I think the disputed air will be involved, but I say Johnny needs to overcome them on his own. Maybe you're right, and maybe I'll be wrong. Who knows here? But I would say that Johnny's come much too far and gone through much too much hell to just have to get an assist now at this stage of the game. I do believe Johnny for the win. Johnny, you're doing NXT champion. I'm definitely looking forward to this. I think it's going to be um, a great match, and it's going to be a good, uh, a great night as well. Uh, let's keep moving on. The NXT Women's Champion is Shayna Baszler versus Io Shirai and Bianca Belair and Kari, Kari Sane, excuse me, in a fatal four-way for NXT Women's Championship. Another barn burner of a match. Um, I think if anyone walks away from this match as the champion, it could be Io Shirai. My guess on this match is Io Shirai. Uh, if any, if the title does change hands or Shayna retains, I don't have any other, I don't have Kari or Bianca, uh, either one winning. That's just me talking. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think that it's going to be huge. I think that, uh, the match itself is going to be epic. They've really been doing this thing with Baszler where she's coming down with Jessamyn Duke, Marina Shafir. They're running rough shot over the entire women's division. The locker room cleared out in this past episode of NXT. Locker room cleared out and all the women were there, like a women's rumble kind of thing going on in the middle of the ring. So there you go. Um, uh, Jen, what's up? Welcome to the show. Thanks for hanging out, of course, as always. Alma, what's up? Uh, so Alma's picking Sorry. Nice. Well, I do like her a lot. So there's Giannis. I don't want to mispronounce your name, man. Giannis is y'all yelling at me and stuff. <laughs> it's okay, man. It's all good. Talking about Taker and Angle and Crown Jewel. I don't even want to talk about Crown Jewel, man. I don't. Crown Jewel shouldn't be the final for anybody. There should be a final Crown Jewel. Get that thing out of Saudi Arabia, folks. Goodness sake. Enough of that, enough of that junk. Um, yeah, Paul says if Shannon sh- uh, wins, she debuts uh, Sunday. Uh, maybe. In the Women's Battle Royal? Yeah, I could see that. Totally. Sure. Why not? Um, yeah, unless Basil gets caught, there's no way she's losing. Yeah, I would agree with that, Jim. I would 100% agree. But you know, we've said that before. And Kevin Owens showed up on Roth in NXT Championship. Mm. 
So there you go. Uh, never say never, right? So we'll see what happens. But uh, uh, Jenna says she's picking uh, uh, Baser, but don't like her. Well, she's dominant. You know, it's hard to uh, hard to uh, uh, hard to pick against her, to be honest with you. But there you go. All right, let's keep on moving, folks. Uh, the NXT, and I'm saving the one I really want to see for last. Okay, the NXT Tag Team Champions, the War Raiders versus Aleister Black and Ricochet. What are the chances that Black and Rick go over in this match? A lot of fans are saying that there's no chance at all. No chance. Bam, there you go. No chance because uh, 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 Black and Ricochet have been uh, doing a thing on the main roster as of late, SmackDown, Monday Night Raw. So I don't know how I feel about that. Um, I love both guys. I got to see both guys live. I went to see SmackDown in Charlotte. It was a fun time. Um, love the presentation of Alistair. Love uh, Ricochet. They're just doing phenomenal work right now. But, you know, uh, to, to imagine that they're going to do it, I don't know. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if they can. Wouldn't it be awesome if they... Did that ended up with another set of tag team belts as well? We thought that might would happen against the revival. However, that was not to be. Um, Jenna says I don't like MMA people. In my wrestling, Jenna, good on you. Go with God on that one. You know what? I'm not gonna argue with you much at all. Adam Cole needs to go to the main roster. Paul, a lot of people are saying that Adam's so small. No disrespect, and so's uh, so's Johnny. Man, I've met pro wrestlers and I've hung out with pro wrestlers before, and man. Uh, met Adam Cole, great guy, freaking nice guy. He was nice to my kid, which I appreciated. Um, and, uh, I, I tower over that dude. Doesn't mean anything. He could still probably legitimately take me out. Right. I, I would say, um, but it's all good. Uh, but yeah, you know, in, in terms of the other guys on the main roster, when I look at Adam and even uh, Gargano, there's been rumors of Gargano going to two or five live people talking about, oh, that's heresy. That's terrible. How dare you? Okay, but I think it all depends on what does Johnny want to do. You know what I mean? You would hope at some level these guys get asked what they want to do with themselves. Now, maybe it doesn't happen all the time, but come on now. Uh, let's see. Can't keep wrestling three times a week, can they? Uh, nah, well, I don't know. Ask them, man. They it, it, they have, listen, a pro wrestler's mentality is, where do you want me to be? I'll be there. That's it. Wait, let, me get, let me grab my boots. I'm there. You know, work, 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 work all the time. Uh, now, of course, as you get older, it gets tougher, but still, the older guys, the veterans are still like, I'll be there. Uh, work, 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 right? Uh, as long as they still stay healthy, stay motivated, sure. Um, don't know if WWE is going to continue with that, but we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see. Okay, fans, so let's keep on moving. Um, uh, let's see. The North American champion, Velveteen Dream versus Matt Riddle. Okay, so um, this is going to be a very entertaining match. I am not in the bag for Matt Riddle. I've made it clear on the program before that I don't dislike him, but I've also made it clear uh, before um, uh, that I don't, that I'm not crazy about them either. Um, I, I just am not. Um, Jen says, give it two or five facelift. Gargano would be ideal there. Hard to disagree with that, Jen. 100% hard to disagree with that. Um, any wrestler has a goal to go to. Well, maybe not a goal, Paul, but you know, maybe if I, I, for most guys and gals, it's not just about where am I going today? It's about where am I, what am I going to do after that? When I get there, what's the plan? If there's a plan, a solid plan and it's logical and makes sense and he's good with it, let him do it. You know what I mean? Shane says, Kofi wins at Mania and loses on Raw Monday. Like, <laughs> God, Shane just, just, uh, yeah. Well, dude, it's WWE. You never know, man. All right, we're going to get to Mania. Relax, everybody. We'll get there. So what do you think about Dream versus Riddle? What's up, Tina? Welcome back to the show. Uh, what do you think about Dream versus Riddle? Uh, uh, I, lo I love Velveteen Dream. What's not to love? The guy's fantastic. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I think it's going to be a good match. I don't... I, all right, so like we were talking about Baszler with the NXT Women's title. Uh, if if Dream drops the North American title, which I don't think he will, but if he does, then we're probably looking at him showing up on Raw Monday night. That's my guess. Um, uh, whether or not that's going to happen, who knows? Matt Riddle will take the NXT North American title and run with it. We'll see what happens. Um, see, John, a lot of people talking about that. Well, pretty much every year, the takeover is better. It's, it's increasingly good every year for sure. Um Dream will make it epic. Yeah, hard to disagree with that. Uh, Dream will win or lose. Lose will make Riddle. Yeah, you're, Jim, great point, man. Great point, dude. Uh, Riddle's got, has Riddle got more time in the business than Dream does, or are they about even, I think? But either way, you got a great point, man, uh, there you just made, that uh, he will definitely help make him uh, and, help, and shine him up, as they say. So, uh, Jason and Myrtle Beach, what's up? I haven't been to your neck of the woods in a long time. Maybe one of these days I'll get back there. Uh, yeah, Jeff, to the, the point about the flip-flops, I don't really care for that. 
Tina's having a takeover watch party. Sweet. You know what my takeover watch party is going to be? With the laptop and the TV. That's my takeover watch party. Probably some coffee. Um, that's that's doing my thing. So there you go. Uh, Larry, good point about dreaming on the history of wrestling. So Justin, what's up in New Jersey? Tom here in Hickory, North Kakalaki. So we got one more match to talk about in the NXT card. Told you it was a little card. A little tiny card, but huge at the same time. Yes, the one I can't wait for. I'm so anxious to see this. The WWE United Kingdom Championship on the line as Pete Dunne versus Valter. Shut up! Oh my god, dude. I'm so looking forward to this match. This is going to be uh, off the chizane. Is that what the kids say? Am I hip now? Do I look much hipper now that I put that in there and I'm going to do this? You know that you're not hip when you have to look at the gang signs before you throw them. All right, well, if I do my finger here and do this, Matt Hardy does that. I'll just do this. That's terrible. It's a typical white guy voice. You ever notice how when like black comics do like the white guy voice, it's always like this. It's really just over the top and oh, what's going on here? Isn't that funny? You ever met a white guy that sounds like that? Have you? I, I don't know that I have. It's the generic white guy voice. Sometimes I do that just for a giggle. So yes, Jenna, I'm with you. I'm going with Valter. Um, I, I love Pete Dunn. It's going to be like, you know that old David and Goliath crap that WWE spouts off so much that you hate it now? It's not even David and Goliath, dude. Because at this point, uh, Pete Dunne could put any man uh, on his knees and be crying for mercy. The dude is so freaking good. Uh, and if he can't do it legitimately, he's at least got you believing he can. Do you know what I mean? Which is the whole point of this thing, right? To make you believe. Uh, so yeah. Paul says he sounds like that. That's good. Um, uh, no, I don't see any matches at NXT TakeOver, Allen. They might do a quick hey-hey when they get there, but I don't, I just, I don't see it. I don't think they need to. You know what I mean? Um, Walter wins and Dunn will be in the NXT title picture. Ooh, Danny, I'm not hating that at all. Pete Dunn versus, uh, versus, uh, Johnny Gargano. Pete Dunn versus Adam Cole, baby. Maybe. We'll see. I'm not hating that at all. Frank, what's up, my friend? Welcome to the show. Walter is freaking huge. And man, Walter can go. I'm gonna tell you right now, Walter can go. I wrote a piece for the chair shot last weekend about a dream match between Walter, uh, and, uh, Brock Lesnar. And I don't know... If that will ever see the light of day in terms of that dream match, but man, I'd I'd pay to see it, wouldn't you? Man, that would be good. Uh, Raymond says, "Don't watch it much." NXT is is not got network, but Dream looks good. Yeah, Dream uh, is very good for sure. Done showing up at Raw. Not that I now that I've watched Jen, I'm with you. I'm gonna watch anyway. But yeah, um, and you know when Dunn did show up, wasn't it Raw? He showed up on it was a SmackDown, right? Refresh my memory. The crowd went. They they popped for him. They knew who he was, right? So that was nice. Um, Larry, yeah, I can't, I can't argue with you, Larry, uh, that he belongs on the main roster, but dude, we said that before we've said that before. And what happened? Uh, the guy gets there and you're like, Oh God, this is it. Oh, oy vey. I don't want that for Pete. I want something much more than that for him. So, you know, to your point, we'll see what happens. Uh, somebody just hit me on the column. I'll, if that, if you're watching the show, I'll get back to you here shortly. Good morning in Minnesota, Brad, from Tom, North Carolina. I love doing that. That's fun. Uh, let's see. Hey, Dom, have a blast, man. Have a blast, dude. Tell us all about it for sure. Yeah, I would definitely pay to see Walter versus Brock. And maybe I'll just say Walter. So, um, is it maybe weekend the most coffee consumption? For you? I don't, Jeff, I don't know about the most, but there's going to be some consumed. I've already had two cups this morning, so we'll see what happens the rest of my day here. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a good card. Takeover is going to be fun tonight. You got to watch, you got to watch. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Check it out. Watch with a friend, uh, watch with your girl, watch with your guy, whatever the thing you have there is. That sounds terrible, right? It's 2019, Jack, whatever. But, um, are you hearing a ringing? I just had a phone call. So isn't that terrible? I'm going to have to like call that person back. So there you go. Um, you know, you would think by now that, that, uh, everyone knows that I'm actually doing the show. What's up, Brian? Welcome. So hope everyone out there uh, uh, is looking forward to TakeOver. I definitely am. I think it's going to be top-notch. Um, is it going to steal the show for WrestleMania weekend? It's entirely possible. But we've got uh, another event that may just steal the show. We're going to hit this one before we hit uh, WrestleMania 35. Is that cool with you guys? We're going to hit this sucker, and then we're going to move on to Mania. I told you we've got a lot to talk about, and my mouth is already dry. Um, how many of you folks are planning on watching the G1 Supercard tomorrow night? How many of you out there are planning on watching tomorrow night at Madison Square Garden? Maybe not live. 
good on you if you are. I'll be watching on the uh, uh, the New Japan uh, uh, New Japan World streaming service. Gonna be awesome. Jason just says that Mania is weak. Uh, someone just asked about Jordan Devlin. I love me some Jordan Devlin. Dude, I'm going to tell you right now. That dude is crazy talented, cerebral, um, fun to watch, uh, has great matches. with Everyone he's ever stepped in the ring with he has a great match with him. I've never seen Jordan Devlin have a bad match. If there's a bad Jordan Devlin match, I'd be interested to know who it was against because that guy evidently is like a sack of potatoes, okay? Because Jordan, every time he gets in the ring, the dude shows up and shows off. Do you know what I'm saying? Jen's going to watch. Who else is going to watch? All right, folks, let's let's zip through this because I know we might have more WWE fans here, the New Japan fans. Shame on you, I'm saying. Uh, but let's let's get through the card and we're going to jump to the main event, WrestleMania, the main event here on the main event. Call your friends. Text your buddies. Let your pals know that Tom Clark's main event's on the air right now. you got to be here and hang out, dude. Let's make this happen. Thank you for listening, by the way, if you're not watching live. I didn't forget you. <laughs> the mic's there. Okay. All right, let's get through the show here. Um, the G1 Supercard, Madison Square Garden, Saturday night. Sometimes I go into like a, um, um, uh, 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 what's his name? God Amati. I do this thing, man, sometimes where I, I have this, uh, uh, this, I blank out on someone's name. Isn't that weird? Kevin Hart, my God in heaven. Sometimes I do this, my cadence sounds like Kevin Hart. You guys ever notice that? Sometimes when I'm like doing the rapid fire stuff, no one's hearing that, are they? Fine, whatever. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Of course, the New Japan um, uh, G1 Supercar is a, is a, is a joint promotion uh, uh, co-promoted by Ring of Honor and New Japan. Going to feature stars from both companies. And here we go. Uh, K- and I don't want to mispronounce your name. Kagetsu, Jeannie Rose, and Hazuki versus Hana Kimura, Stella Gray, and Sumi Sakai in a six-woman tag team match. I don't know if it'll kick off the show or not, but it's booked on the card. The Honor Rumble, which I'm sure is going to feature stars from... Both New Japan and Ring of Honor should be cool. Maybe some surprises in there as well. Um, Will Ospreay, the never open, uh, the never overweight champion versus Jeff Cobb, the Ring of Honor World Television Champion. This is winner take all, folks. Both titles are on the line. Whoever wins this match gets both straps. We'll see what happens. Interested to see how this goes down. Looking forward to this match for sure. Um, uh, I, I'm a fan of both guys. I've really been, I'm, I'm sold on Cobb. I'm the first guy to tell you the first few times I saw Jeff Cobb, I wasn't impressed. I'm sold on him now. I'm impressed. I saw him live and that's what sold me on him. Until you see Jeff Cobb live, you can't appreciate how freaking strong this guy is. He's crazy strong. Dude picks up a refrigerator and, you know, throws it over his head for crying out loud. It's insane. Like, just saying. Uh, and he's built like a refrigerator too. It's it's crazy, this guy. Um, crazy strong and athletic, quick on his feet, gets a, up and down off the mat real fast. Crazy. Very athletic. Great to watch him. That's gonna be a fun match. Uh Roosh versus Dalton Castle. Dalton, one of the most entertaining guys in the business. I'm gonna enjoy that match, gonna be great. Maya Iwatani versus Kelly Klein for the Women of Honor Championship. We'll see how that goes down. Interested to see. Um, uh, between those two ladies, Kelly Klein had a great match. Uh, the the uh, uh, Ring of Honor show we went to see. Uh, loved watching her. She's very underrated, by the way. Doesn't get enough credit. The open challenge laid down by Bully Ray has been answered. The IWGP United States Champion Juice Robinson will uh, work Bully Ray in a New York City street fight. To my knowledge, the IWGP United States Championship is not online. Bully Ray is not a New Japan contracted performer. So, uh, should still be a good match as well. Hang on with me, folks, here with you. All right, well, I'm running through the card here. Taiji Ishimori versus Dragon Lee versus Bandito. This is the one that could steal the show, flat out. Three-way match for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. If you this, if this match isn't on your radar, put it on your radar and get to see this match because it should be freaking fun, very fun to watch. Another winner-take-all match for you, folks. They're not holding back on this card, man. The Gorillas of Destiny, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa, the IWGP Tag Team Champions versus Villain Enterprises, PCO and Brody King. They're supposed to be the Briscoes until the Briscoes lost the belts of Villain Enterprises. They are the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions versus Los and Gerbanales de Japon, uh, Evil and Sonata, and the Briscoes as well in this match. It is a four-way tag team match, and I think they're calling it a four-corner war, four-team war, or something like that. The winner takes the IWGP Tag Team and the RH World Tag Team Championships. Again, not holding back. It's the first time they've ever run the Garden. Dragon Lee, Jen, I'm with you, 100%. Um, uh, Going to be awesome. The G1 is available on the Ring of Honor 
um, Honor Club app, and it's also available on the uh, New Japan World streaming service. And I got news for you folks. If all you want to do is just watch the show tonight, you can sign up. Uh, it's like 10 bucks for either one, and then just cancel the service. You don't have to keep it for a whole month. Up to you. Or keep it a month and then cancel it before it renews, okay? But I would tell you right now, it's worth it. I'm telling you it's worth it. Plus, you get archived. Uh, the, if you're going to do it, here's my suggestion to you, unless you just want Ring of Honor. Unless you do the premium Honor Club with Ring of Honor, you don't get the pay-per-views if they're the big pay-per-views. you got to pay in addition to that. So I, I do both. But for the Ring of Honor big events, if it's big enough I want to watch it, I will do it. And I will pay the extra. But for tonight, I'm watching it on the Ring of Honor app because I don't know that it's included in the regular Honor Club subscription. Maybe it is, and I'm wrong about that. But I will definitely watch. Um, we're going to wait for Access TV. Danny, I, I respect that, man. I think it'll probably be a week. Maybe a week uh, before they get it on, so we'll see. Um, who have I got in this match? Oh, man. I think Villain Enterprises are on a roll. I say Villain Enterprise. Now, I do not they're not contracted with New Japan unless something changes. I mean, they've got a working deal with Ring of Honor. We'll see how that goes. Now, the Briscoes have appeared in New Japan, so we'll see. Um, I don't know if PCO has any travel issues because he is Canadian. Does he have any travel issues to and from Japan? I'm just throwing it out there, too, because I don't have any idea. Um, but then again, I, I dig all the teams in this match. Uh, Evil Sonata have had a, a top year, 2018, so we'll see what happens. Um, okay, four freaking main events. If all the, as if all that wasn't enough for you out there, folks. Four great main events. Ready, here we go. Zack Sabre Jr. versus the ace of New Japan, Hiroshi Tanahashi. I smile every time I say that. This is going to be fun. This is going to be a singles match for the British Heavyweight Championship. Sabre is your champ. Tanahashi is the challenger. Not something he's accustomed to being here, folks. Um, this is going to be top-notch. Sabre brings it every time he's in the ring, and every time he's in the ring, it looks like he's killing a man. Uh, dissecting him. They should have called Zack Sabre the doctor, okay, Cause, or the mortician, because he dissects uh, his opponents. But they've already got a dead mortician running around, or lumbering around, I should say. So there you go. Um, I'm looking forward to this. Anytime these guys have met up in the past, it's been must-see TV. We'll see what happens in this match. Um, I do see Sabre retaining the championship, although I wouldn't be shocked if Tanahashi won the belt from him tonight, I'm just or tomorrow night, I'm just saying. The next one, Tetsuya Naito versus Kota Ibushi for the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. That's right, folks. Naito putting the tile on the line. Naito wants to be the first ever, ever double champion in, in uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, which means that if he wins tomorrow night, retains the title, he would go on to face the IWGP champion, um, whoever that may be. That would be interesting to see, man. I love me some Tetsuya Naito. I really do. Uh, well, got any comments on that? Uh, I've never seen Zach wrestle live, Tina, to your point. So, uh, what's up, Robbie in New York? Uh, it's going to be good. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to that entire show. I have a buddy of mine uh, hanging out with me tomorrow night to watch. And I told him, I said, dude, you're invited to come over. But I am i won't be much company because I'm going to be writing during the entire thing. But please, by all means, come over and hang out. So, man, I'm out of breath already. We still got two more on this card. Are you ready? Here we go, folks. Jay Lethal versus Marty Skrull versus Matt Taven for the RH World Championship. I'm in the bag for Marty Skrull. I can't help it. I don't think he'll win. But we're going to see Marty Skrull live on April 27th, compete for the NWA World Championship. Imagine if he had both titles. I don't think it'll happen. But again, Villain Enterprise is on a roll, Jack. I wouldn't be shocked at anything that happens right now in the industry, especially with this guy. I mean, he's just, he's cream of the crop, man. For real. Last match, the main event, the singles match for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Switchblade Jay White versus the Rainmaker, Kazushka Okada. And I'm going to tell you something. Okada is the best in the world. I don't care what anybody says. You can have your opinion. Go with God and enjoy that all day long. But I'm telling you right now, um, I am absolutely in the bag for Okada. Someone just mentioned Jay. Yes, Israel, I love Jay for sure. Jay's one of the best in the world as well. But for my money, pound for pound, move for move, hold for hold, psychology for psychology and everything that counts in between the ropes and outside the ropes no one's better than Kazushka Okada it's my it's my take um I've been in the back for him for a long time and I'm sticking with him for sure so uh uh yeah man I'm just like I said I'm out of breath already we just covered two huge shows and guess what we still got the granddaddy of them all right on the grandest stage of them all you guessed it folks Wrestlemania 35 coming live from MetLife Stadium New Jersey New York um, uh, Danny, so you were, you were saying Jay White loses. Danny said Jay White loses a bunch. J all right. So before we move on, yeah. So, uh, Jay does seem to be the lame duck champion heading into this, doesn't he? So, um, uh, there you go. 
uh, we'll see what happens. But I do love Okada, Jan, to your point. Absolutely. Capitalize that sucker. All right, folks, this is the show that we're all talking about. This is the big, biggest one of the year. It's the reason that all these other shows are coming to town to begin with. Let's do this. You ready? Are you pumped? Are you psyched? Do you have your coffee? Heck yeah, baby. Let's do this. WrestleMania 35. Let's hit it. The Raw Tag Team Champions, The Revival versus Aleister Black and Ricochet. It's not happening. You guys know that, right? The Revival are defending against Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder. Okay, so I know what you're all thinking. Someone said it. A couple of you said it already. This will break Hawkins' streak. Well, you're right, because I think the Revival lose the Tag Team Championships. Um, Raymond, I'll be watching on WWE Network in the comfort of my own home. There you go. Uh, I know, right, Jim? Uh, so, so uh, uh, Jeff, excuse me. So, uh, so here we go. Um, Hawkins and Ryder getting the nod. I don't know why. There's no storyline. There's no nothing for this. They're just kind of like, hey, we'll take the shot. They go, okay, you can have it. And then they have to match. I know it's not that simple, but buddy, it sure feels that simple, doesn't it? We'll see what happens. Um, I do think Hawkins and Ryder win the titles. I wouldn't be surprised if they lost him right back on the following Raw because WWE does that stuff where they just thumb their nose to the audience and make all of us feel a bit silly, right? We'll show you for supporting somebody. We'll show you for backing somebody up. We'll show you. Mm -hmm. We're WWE. Don't tell us what to do. We tell you what you're going to (laughs) do. Raymond, I think you want the streak to end just so we can quit hearing about it, right? I do think that, uh, um, uh, to your point, the streak will end. I do think that Hawkins and Ryder will be new Raw Tag Team Champions. I hate that for the revival, but it is what it is. We didn't mention that Alexa Bliss is going to host Mania. Yawn. I'm sorry, no disrespect. I know she's doing what she can do and doing what she does. I'm not a fan. I I just am not. Um, I think they love her. In fact, I know they love her to pieces. I'm just not feeling it, baby. Not feeling it at all. And uh, I just, I'm not down with it. It's it, But it's WWE, and again, I didn't write one column bashing her, and I never will because there's no point in it because WWE and they're going to do what they want when they want to do it, regardless of how much logic it makes or doesn't make. Not trying to hate on her, Jim. It's, it's just my opinion. You don't have to have it if you don't want to. Love her. It's fine. I don't. So, uh, uh, yeah, bound the mic. Yeah. Yeah, we can, Paul, for sure. I just, I'm not sold. But, um, uh, you know, we'll see. I guess I can just turn the volume down. <laughs> Jenna, I don't know. I don't get into that stuff, man. I don't get into who who does what with who and do who does what to who. I don't care. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Um We'll see how it goes. Like I said, I, I don't. Uh, yeah, Jen, to your point, same here. I don't. I don't get much out of that uh, either. But it is what it is. Let's move on. We got a whole big card to talk about here, folks. In another match uh, on a, on a certain card that may just be one of the highlights of the night. I'm sure it will be, and that's going to be hard with all these matches. Cruiserweight champion Buddy Murphy versus Tony Nese in the kickoff match. Okay, so the kickoff match. Um, uh, Tony Nese not on the level maybe of Cedric Alexander. 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 There it is. And uh, and Mustafa Ali, in terms of crowd excitement, you know, moving around the ring and that kind of stuff. Nice is very solid, very accomplished worker, very good. I don't know who will play the face in this match. Hard to believe it's going to be Nice. I just hope that it's a quick in and out. No disrespect, but uh, they've got a big card to get to. They got to get the crowd jacked up, and that's their that's their points. Like getting the uh, the stand up comedian, the warm up guy before the stand up comedian that you paid money to see. Right, that's kind of the deal. Warm up the crowd, get them anxious, get the juices flowing, get the blood flowing for the show. So that's their job. Uh, hopefully the match goes well. And of course, as we say, for every event we've ever covered, every show we've ever covered here on the show, uh, I want everyone to stay safe, be healthy, have a great night, and most importantly, have fun. That's what we're all here for, yes? So we'll see what happens. Um, I don't see Nice winning the title. That's just me. All right, folks, let's move on. The WrestleMania Women's Battle Royale. Man, there's a whole bunch of ladies in this sucker. Um, let's see who all is listed for this thing. So you don't have to go do it yourself. Ready? I'm trying to get there. Here we go. Here's who we got so far. Asuka, Carmella, Carmella, Naomi, Lana, Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, Nikki Cross, Dana Brooke, Ruby Wright, Liv Morgan, Sarah Logan, Mickey James, Selena Vega, and a partridge in a pear tree. Man. Uh, so they're probably going to be more. I wouldn't be surprised if some legends showed up for this match. I don't, uh, I don't think there's a stipulation involved. Uh, let's see if there is. If the winner gets a shot at anything. Um, 
No one's talking about, there's nothing here about the winner gets a title shot, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is, right? Um, I, I don't know who I who I vote for in this match, to be fair. I, I don't really know if I have a winner in this. Do you guys have someone that you'd like to see win this? I would say it's got to be Asuka because it just, you know, why she dropped the belt to Flair and all this other stuff. You know, everyone's talking about that. So we'll see what happens. Um, Asuka better win, Larry says, yeah. Uh, so a couple matches that people don't care about. I'm um, Jen says my eyes just crossed G so much for no reason. Yeah, it uh, does seem like a lot for no reason, right? Like uh, no stipulation, no reason to fight, no reason to go to war, which is a bit silly in my opinion. I, I share your opinion. So yeah, it's real. I wouldn't be shocked. I'm with you. Um, Michelle McCool probably will show up. Robbie's going with Nikki Cross. I love Nikki Cross. I do. Uh, Emma is Emma is a free agent supposedly. That's the rumor mill happening. <laughs> she did just join that new faction that Juice has in Ring of Honor. Um, and now I can't remember the new faction. I can't remember, man. Juice Robinson's faction in uh, uh, New Japan. No worries, I'll look that up. This moment of clicking brought to you by Tom Clark's main event. Uh, who we got for you? What's the faction? Lifeblood. There it is. Uh, so yeah, she apparently was a, was was part of Lifeblood and then not there. Israel, no AJ Lee. I'd be shocked and probably have a heart attack and drop dead if it happened. Casey Evans, uh, rumored to win. Lacey Evans. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all. <sighs> Emelina finally debuts. <laughs> Uh, Joshua says AJ Lee returns becomes champ. CM Punk returns become US champ. Nah, don't see it. Joshua for either one. Okay, another main event, or I should say Battle Royal to get to. The Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royale. Um, we've got a list of guys here. Let's go through them real quick, shall we? Braun Strowman and Colin Jost and Michael Che of SNL fame, who no one cares about. If you say you do, you're lying. You're lying, don't lie. Lying is bad. And you know what they say, Lord hates a liar, okay? Andrade, Apollo Crews, Titus O'Neil, Tyler Breeze, Jinder Mahal, No Way Jose, Bobby Roode, uh, Chad Gable, Kalisto, Grand Metalik, Lince, Lince Dorado, Bo Dallas, Curtis Axel, Heath Slater, Rhino, Victor, Connor, Ali, the artist formerly known as Mustafa Ali, Shelton Benjamin, Luke Gallus, Carl Anderson, Matt Hardy, Jeff Hardy, Otis Tucker, EC3. I say Ali for the win. Don't know if it'll happen. You would think this would be Braun's match to win or lose, but just because a guy is that big doesn't mean he's going to win anything. When's the last time he won a title? Oh, that's right. Never. Tag team titles with like a 10-year-old kid or 11-year-old, whatever old that freaking kid was. So, you know. Talk about props. The kid was a prop. I'm just saying. <laughs> Do you care about this match? Anyone out there in TV land can't wait for the Andre the Giant when we're about to roll. Jen's pumped. Jen is pumped for this match. She's lying to you people. You good people out there. Uh, Lance says, Mom must they replace people who work hard all year with jokes. Man, if you could answer that, you'd be a millionaire. You wouldn't be a millionaire, but at least you have your answer. <laughs> Man, it's going to be 19 hours, Jeff. You didn't know that? Uh, Gronk, uh, the ring could just explode. I vote for the ring exploding, Jim. I vote they have to shut Mania down halfway through to replace the ring. Just let them work on the floor. Let's, let's do that. Uh, yeah, why are the Hardys not in against the Usos? Tina, great question. Watch it happen on SmackDown on Tuesday night. I would not be surprised at all. Uh, <laughs> Lance says, what time will it end? I have to work Monday. Lance, you should have took the day off, dude. I, I Dude, I honestly, I'm thinking 1130. I'm guessing 1130 is when it's over. It starts at like 4 in the morning, and it's off at 1130. Supposedly, they're going to like tighten it up. They're going to tighten it up. Watch this. Tighten it up this year. And if you believe that, you'll believe anything. So, let's see. Uh, yep, yep, you're right. Uh, let's see. All he wins, I care. I can see him to be World Heavyweight Championship match on SmackDown on WrestleMania. Sure, why not? Uh, Miss Lopez, hello. Uh, says uh, Andre the Giant Memorial by Royals career suicide. Well, who's won it that's moved on to just do something great? No one, right? Don't know if it's career suicide. Maybe it's akin to being on the cover of the Madden football game. Is that curse broken, by the way? Is it still intact where every time the guy's on the cover, he gets injured that season? Is that curse still alive or has it? Is it over now? NFL fans out there, hit me and tell me. 
Uh, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, let's move on here, folks. SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Usos versus Ricochet and Aleister Black versus The Bar versus Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev. Okay, so Black and Ricochet are getting another shot this weekend at Tag Team Gold. Imagine if they won tonight and won Sunday. Holy cow, Bob's your uncle. Dual Tag Team Champions. Wouldn't that be amazing? You know what? I say do it. Just do it. Just shut up and do it. Tell me they can't do it. They could They could totally do it and make it work, man. Talk about giving the rub to two guys. Holy crap. And all you're doing is setting up for the turn later when they eventually turn on each other, split up, and go singles. Why not do it? You know what I mean? I know that sounds crazy. Tom, what are you thinking? Have you lost your mind? How, are the headphones too tight? Maybe. Who knows? I need to get them adjusted. What's your problem? So, we'll see. But, uh, you know, why not just happen, man? Why not just do it? I mean, I'm all for it. <laughs> Jeff said, heck yeah, do it. Yeah, why not? Um, going with the Usos. Jim, love the Usos. Uh, for sure. So, uh, uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, they could, they don't have to stick to one show, man. They could do multiple. Why not? Uh, Kurt Angle versus Baron Corbin and Kurt Angle's farewell match. Also referred to as God, I don't want to see this. <laughs> Cause no one wants to see this. Right or wrong? Right or wrong? Right or wrong? Right. What? What is it? Right or wrong? Huh? Huh? Right. Okay, right. No one wants to see this. No one wants it at all. Wanna know why? Because Baron Corbin is not anyone's choice. No one's choice. You know whose choice he is? He's Baron Corbin's choice. That's who chooses. No one else wants him in this. Okay. You know, if if Baron were standing there face to face with you, would you look at Baron and say, You suck. You suck so no, you wouldn't. You wanna know why? Because most of you have manners. Okay? For real. Didn't your mama's raise you any better? For sure. Mine did. But let me tell you what I would say to his face if I could ever interview the guy face to face, I'd say, Baron. You got a lot of heat. Uh, people don't tend not to like you. Do you care at all? Is it, you know, how do you reckon all this this hatred coming your way? Is it just because you're a heel or is there something more to it than that? Because I think these are fair questions. And let's be honest, the guy's not the best talent you've ever seen in the ring. Uh, it should have been Cena, 100%. I wrote that column when they first announced this. I don't know if I was the first one. Maybe I wasn't. But I was one of the guys in the beginning that said, hey, it should be John. I said it last year, man. I think on the show even. It should be John versus Kurt. Not only did they not do it, they didn't do it, and they so didn't do it. You know what I mean? Not only did they not do it, they didn't do it, and they went, mm, at you when they didn't do it. You know what I mean? Not only are we not going to do it, we're going to give you Baron freaking Corbin. Try that on for size. How's that fit? Didn't fit me at all. Does it fit you? Nope. Nope. It doesn't, because it's terrible. Okay. But, you know what? As I say, I don't really sleep over it. I rant. I rant. I rant. Therefore, I live. Okay? But I'm not losing sleep over it. Mike says, I'm surprised WWE hasn't released Baron. He'll face not that great. And so not over for us fans. Mike, that's why WWE's not going to release him. It's backwards. It's backwards day. Right? It's opposite day. In Bikini Bottom. Okay? SpongeBob and Patrick. The whole nine. Yeah, I'm a fan. What's up? Uh, <laughs> well, you know, we could sit here all day and talk about who it should have been. I'm with you. Maybe it should have been John Allen. Maybe it should have been Dolph. Who knows? Angle squashes Corbin and Cena comes out as a surprise. Tina, how about this? How about Angle just squashes Corbin and Cena comes out as a surprise? I'm with you. I'm okay with it. As long as Corbin is staring up the lights within like 30 to 90 seconds, and 90 seconds is being generous here, folks. Kurt, as much as he's accomplished, Hall of Famer, deserves to ride off in the sunset like Clint Eastwood after saving the town. 100%, baby. And then some. Kurt's having a rough go of it in the ring, Jack. A really rough go right now. And we need to not forget that. And um, it's uh, hard for him to get up and down. He's not mobile anymore. Um, this needs to, to wrap up quick, for sure. Joshua suggesting he lost more than his hair. He lost his marbles as well. It's possible. Uh, it's all about the booking. It has nothing to do with Baron Corbin. Jason, I disagree, my friend. Baron is not a compelling heel. Baron sounds too rehearsed on the mic. He's overproduced. He doesn't emote. The company loves to say that. I emote. I get emotion. No, it doesn't. He doesn't get anything. He just stands there. There's no vibe coming from this guy at all. So I would suggest to you that, yes, the booking is to blame. However, people would be more into this if they truly hated Corbin because he's such a good heel. He's not a good heel. Okay? He's not effective. One guy's take. You can disagree with me all day long. Perfectly fine. What if Corbin gets attacked and Cena takes his place? Sure, who would attack him? Who would put it? Who would take Corbin out? Who's got beef with Corbin other than everyone on the planet at this point? Uh, you're right, though. It could happen for sure. 
Let's move on, folks. Intercontinental Champion Bobby Lashley versus the Demon Finn Balor. They're not only advertising the Demon. They're not only talking about the Demon. They're absolutely advertising the Demon at this point. So we'll see what happens. People talking about the Demon's never lost. The Demon did lose. Didn't we say that on the program? The Demon lost against Samoa Joe. Am I crazy? Didn't we say that here on the show? We had someone look it up because we were debating it back and forth and back and forth like crazy. And we're talking about, oh, he's, un- he's undefeated as the Demon, Tom. I don't think he is. Um... Having said that, he's winning the title back. <laughs> so, there you go. Um, I just, I'd be shocked if he didn't win the title back. Um, yeah, I'm with you, Angie. But you know what? It's mania. They're going to do the big stage and the big presentation, but it is what it is. Yep, Demon. Thank you, Tina. Demon sucks. Ooh, Jason with the hot take. Uh, let's see. Uh, Demon King. Yes, absolutely. Honestly, W is not has made not care about the demon. I don't think they meant us care about Finn too much. I think another instance in which the WWE superstar in question has to do everything in his power to get himself over, which means every time he's in the ring, every time he's on camera, every time he's on the network, every time he's on YouTube or Twitter or social media, anywhere at all in the world, house shows, whatever, he's working overtime to get himself over. That's what a lot of these guys have to do because they don't really have the quote unquote machine behind them. Having said that, don't feel bad for Finn, as we said on the program here multiple times in the past, folks. Finn is leaving the dream job, leaving his dream in WWE. Well paid, well compensated for his efforts, selling merch. He's featured, whether or not he wins or loses, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, um, definitely watch the takeover night, Michael, 100%. So, uh, um, let's see, Demon Ballard would take 55 minutes to get to the ring in 10 minutes. Let me tell you something. Um, when I was, when I was in the business, we, we used to bring George South up all the time for shows. Uh, he brought his little crew, little crew of guys, including his son, George South Jr. as a wrestler. And, um, George, and say if we gave George 10 minutes, he would spend five minutes working the crowd after the bell rang, before and after the bell rang. Legit, five minutes. He got the crowd worked up in a fever pitch before he ever touched the other guy. Spent five minutes working another guy. He barely broke a sweat. And he's very good. Don't get me wrong. A veteran, older guy, right? But still very good. But that was the point. Get the crowd warmed up. Fire them up where they can't wait to see you get killed. And then five minutes in the match. He used to tell us backstage behind the curtain, he'd say, I didn't break a sweat tonight. And I got better reaction than anybody here. Because it was the truth, right? The truth. Smart. Smart. You know what I mean? Save your body. Don't kill yourself or the other guy. Take the nine off. Go in there and work the crowd for five minutes. Then lock up. Work for another five. By that time, fans don't even realize how short the match was. Because they just hate you so much, they want to see you get killed. They remember the into- the totality of the thing. You see what I'm saying? Smart thinking. So yeah, the presentation, uh, Bowers' presentation. There you go. Uh, it's it's the whole thing. So I'm anxious to see it. I love the demon part of him for sure. I love Finn as well. United States Champion Samoa Joe versus Rey Mysterio. This match is still being advertised. It's still booked. Rey's still going to be the challenger. He did tweak his right ankle. Uh, at, uh, against, uh, was it uh, Cesaro? Who was it he faced? Was it Cesaro? No, it was Sheamus, right? Uh, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh, is there going to be a new United States champion? I wouldn't be surprised if uh, uh, Joe lost. I don't want to see him lose it. At least Joe's got a championship match at Mania. When's the last time that's ever happened? Uh, so this should be good. I'm looking forward to it. Um, uh, so we'll see what happens. I, I'm, I'm going with Joe for the win, Okay. Uh, let's move on, folks. AJ Styles versus Randy Orton, one of the most unheralded uh, uh, matches that maybe WrestleMania has seen in quite some time, but one of the most anticipated because just the buildup has been so good. Like, WWE should have took notes and made this happen with other things and on, on other matches, by the way. My dog is behind me asleep on the futon. You can't see him. He's like he's like dead of the world, man. Dead of the world. He wanted to hang out, so he's hanging out. I'm saying. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, people are picking a... Ooh. <clears throat> Six one nine, just go away. Wow. So people got Randy over AJ. Um, I'd like to see AJ win a match at WrestleMania, but uh, yeah, I don't know that it will hurt either guy. I think for the sake of of the attacks that AJ's took from uh, Randy, I would say that AJ wins. I think they're setting up an AJ Styles win. Now, does a does an AJ Styles win negate everything Randy say about WWE being the the uh, the superior product? Because if you think it does, then maybe Vince thinks it does, which means Randy's winning. I'm telling you, man, it's still a lot of mind games backstage, regardless of what anyone tells you. Still a lot of mind games. Why do you think they made Eric Bischoff out to look like a complete idiot back in the day? 
You think, oh, it's just storyline. Stop. He was the guy that tried to run WWE out of business. Don't tell me it's just storyline. I'm not that stupid. I might be a little stupid. I'm not that stupid. So, come on. So, yeah, if that's the case, then I say Randy. But Andrew says both good on the mic. I'm going with RKO for the win. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Phil says AJ probably going to Raw. Well, it, hopefully it won't hurt him. You know what I mean? Because Raw is doing a whole bunch of nothing these days, right? Let's move on, folks. The WWE Women's Tag Team Championships on the line is Bailey and Sasha Banks defend the titles against Beth Phoenix and Natalya, the Iconics, and Nia Jax and Tamina in a fatal four-way match for the Women's Tag Team Championship. So, uh, let's see what happens in this match. Uh, thank you, Chris. Appreciate that. Um, I'm going with Bailey and Banks to retain. They just did win the championship belts. It was a tough road to hoe to get there. They finally made it. A tearful congratulatory uh, speeches and gracious acceptance speeches by both. I don't see them losing the titles at this point in time. I could be wrong. But yes, Beth, Beth Phoenix looks great. Natalia's still on her game. Uh, this, that, and the other. Jen says Randy for the win. There you go. Alicia says the Iconics need to go away. Said, well, from your lips to God's ears, my dear, for sure. Um, Jason says the Iconics. God help us all. Don't be surprised. It's WWE, Jack. Iconics come in and squash everybody, kill everybody with chairs, and take a big dump on all of them. It's, it's WWE. What are you going to do, man? What are you going to do about it? Sit back and cry? We've all done that. I have too, trust me. Where I'm like, why are you doing this? Why? But the fact is, it's WWE. They can do whatever they want to do. It's their company. It doesn't have to make sense. It has to make sense to them. Maybe it doesn't. Who knows anymore? It gives you a headache. Makes you want to lay down and take a nap. Possibly hang yourself later. I get that. Um, what are you going to do? Uh, don't be shot. Divas of Doom win because the Anvil's Hall of Fame induction. Uh, okay, Jim. I'll take that as well. <laughs> uh, Will's going to Mania. Will, have a blast, my friend. Miss Lopez is picking picking a Phoenix and Natalia. A lot of people are saying that as well. Yeah, Joshua, I think we talked about Trish and Lena possibly being in this, and it didn't happen as well. Uh, so, um, all right, folks, let's move on. We're going to hit the next match: Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre in a match that really it it's it really doesn't have anything to do with anything except it's a way to get Roman back in. Uh, Drew's a good heel for Roman to face because Drew's got no love from anybody. Drew's an exceptionally good heel. No one really cheers for him. He's not considered a cool heel that would get a pop, like a positive reaction. Um, I think this is a good match for Roman. I think it'll be better than what we all believe it will be, although we've seen them go to war before. Uh, we'll see what happens here. I'm anxious to see it. Um, glad again that Roman's back at full strength. Roman's starting to get booed again, so which means the world... The world is going back to normal. I wish people could let it go, but they're not going to because people are people. It's who they are. They hate Roman, and I don't think that's ever going to fully change. So you can hate that or love it. Make the best of it. I don't know what else to tell you about it. Uh, yeah, going with, going with Roman for the win. Don't be surprised if Drew wins and leaves Roman bloodied and battered, covered with chairs, lit on fire. I mean, <laughs> I exaggerate. But it's WWE, man. You never know. Like, every time you think you got this stuff figured out, they throw you a swerve. And not because it's fun to throw swerves, because it's compelling television, Tom, but because they want to do it. Uh, Jenna, yeah, I'm with you. I, I go with Roman as well. They are taking their time pushing Drew for sure. It's almost like they're going, we'll save this guy. Why, no better time than the present. But see, here's the thing. When you've got a roster that big, certain guys come up for pushes and it's, and it's become certain guys' time. This is Seth's time. It's his moment, to be fair. And so if you push Drew too far up too fast, it's going to get in the way of that. And then you're like, what are we going to do with him now? So I think that really does become a problem, dude. So, I, you know, I get what you're saying. But yeah, same time. Ugh, right? Yeah, Jenna says she doesn't care about this match. A lot of people are saying that as well. We've talked about Taker, Will. We've talked about, uh, or a bit, excuse me, we talked about Taker. He's in New York. I would not be surprised if he's there. In fact, he's rumored to be backstage when it goes down. We'll see if he gets on the card and where he gets on and on the card at. Shame at Man versus The Miz in a false can anywhere match. And another match I like to refer to as I don't care. Uh, I don't care about this match. Um, I like uh, both guys. I don't like Shane in the ring anymore. I don't like Shane on my TV in the ring anymore. Wrestling in tennis shoes and a baseball t-shirt. I don't care for it. Never have. Maybe back in the, you know, 90s. Not now, okay? Uh, it's time to stop, all right? But he's a McMahon. It's not going to stop. And I, I'm not going to write the column saying, Shane McMahon should stop wrestling. So saith I, so saith the Lord. But you know why? Because I, no, it's not going to happen. I don't care. Because at the end of the day, 
What you think about this company is not going to change the way they do business. They like to tell you that they listen to the fans. Bogus. They like to tell you that they're listening. They care. Bogus. They like to tell you they're going to change the way they do things because of the fans. Bogus. It's all nonsense. It's been very few and far between that WWE has ever changed its course because of what you say. Now, maybe they will. Maybe there's been instances where they have. But did you ever stop to think that maybe the plan was already there to change course and maybe they just gave you the credit for it? I'm just saying, I, you know, and maybe I'm dead wrong. Maybe I'm the crazy one in the room, the crazy old dude with the headphones on, whatever. But I'm telling you right now, I just, I don't see that. We listen to the fans. No, you don't. Stop. Just stop. I don't care anymore. I'm not losing sleep over it like I used to. My job is to cover this stuff and to, and to, and to tell you about this stuff and watch and, and, you know, and to report and analyze and all this stuff. And I'm going to continue doing that. So I got to take myself out. I got to take my emotion out of it. And when I take my emotion out of it, I, I see this company for what it is. That logic is gone. Yeah, you guys know that kayfabe is dead. Logic is dead with it. Logic's buried deeper than kayfabe ever could hope to be buried, folks. For real. Honestly. So don't lose too much sleep over it. No sense. No sense in it. No sense. Paul says Miz bidding off Sandy was ridiculous and terrible. See, there you go, Paul. Logic. Now, gone for these guys. See that? Brown right over the head. Gone. Over. Dead in the water. So there you go. Um, I say Miz for the win. Miz needs it. Don't know if it's going to do anything for him, but Miz for the win. Triple H versus Batista, no holds barred match, which will be much better than I think you think it's going to be. And I think you think it's going to be good to begin with. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be much better than good because Triple H is going to be calling the match because Batista did the best business he's ever done in WWE with, with Triple H. Period. Okay. Uh, that's that's how I that's how I look at it. We've said it before on the program. I stick to it. Batista did very good business with Ray, with Eddie, with other people. He never did anything like he did, the quality of what he did with Triple H, with anyone else. So there you go. Uh, so I think it's going to be very good. Uh, everyone's calling Batista. But you, you guys know that if Batista wins, Triple H doesn't wrestle again. Triple H for the win. Paul says because it's all about him. Uh, Paul, whether it is or isn't, I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right and you're wrong. I don't have any idea. Um, but I think that is it a combination of it's always about him or it ends up in the circumstances where it is all about him or both or maybe one of it. I don't have any idea, man. You hear the bird chirping? The bird wants to chime in too as well, folks. He's got an opinion. You don't want to hear the bird's opinion? For God's, God's sake, crying out loud. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> so there you go. Um, I still say Triple H for the win. It's Batista's last ride, folks. He doesn't want to do this anymore. He wants to go out the right way, his way, the way he wanted to go out years ago. This is how he can do it. And I think that, uh, yeah, Batista does not win this match. <laughs> You're that crazy. I'm not going to edit that out. The Bird's part of the show now. He's part of the canon of Tom Clark's main event, folks. He has a place in the legacy of the show. It's never going to go away, okay? So, uh, yeah. That, uh, Paul says best Batista press promo in decades. I agree with that 100%. Um, all right, folks. We're down the wire, and I so need some water and a nap. Hadn't even watched the shows yet. Isn't that something? Universal Champion Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins. How many people out there believe that Brock Lesnar walks away with the Universal Championship? Still the champion. Yada, yada, yada. Bob's your uncle. There you go. Um, don't be surprised when Brock Lesnar wins this match. I've said it before. I'll say it again. No one has ever gotten over on Brock Lesnar without Brock Lesnar getting the comeback on him. No one. I, don't, I can't think of a soul. And I've put the question to you, and I've asked multiple times on multiple occasions, give me someone that has that has gotten over on him and Brock has never got to come back on him. And I'm sure it happened in New Japan. Um, there's only one guy that I know of in WWE at this point, and that's Roman Reigns. Um, that has got the once over on Brock, and Brock has not come back. I'm not talking about their war together uh, over the past few years. I'm talking about at the end of the day, Brock Lesnar lost the last match uh, to Roman Reigns, and Brock has not had a comeback match since then. So just so we're clear, just so we're covered, we're going to go back and look up his history real quick. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the WWE stuff because I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm positive about all that. Uh, but we do need to go back, just to be fair, um, to his uh, New Japan run as well. So... Uh, This moment of whistling brought to you by Tom Clark's main event. Here we go. Um, okay, uh, Kurt Angle. 
the uh, uh, IGF uh, Tucon Boom Bay, uh, June 29, 2007. Kurt Angle got over on Brock Lesnar. Um, and the IWGP third belt title. There you go. So Kurt got over on Brock. Uh, and then Brock, um, uh, let's see. That was his last match till 2012 when Brock returned to WWE against John Cena. Yes, John won that, but Brock came back on him and destroyed him later. Brock has destroyed everyone with the exception of Roman Reigns in terms of the actual feud of the last match. Danny says Rollins is going to burn Suplex City to the ground. Several times Danny says that. We got you, Dan. All good on this end. Um, uh, yeah, Cena did beat him in Extreme Rules, Jenna, but, but he came back, remember, at SummerSlam that year and destroyed John. Remember when he squashed the crap out of him? So he came back. He did come back. I'm saying John does not hold the last win over him. Rock holds the last win over John. You see what I'm saying? Despite who you're you're throwing at me, and if there's one I miss, please tell me. Um, I'm open to it. But he's always come back and beat the guy in the end. Okay? He's got the last laugh. Uh, Jen says Seth wins with Dean's help. Uh, sure, I'll buy that. Why not? John Cena will be part of Universal Title Match in some way, probably screwing Seth. Ooh, interesting, Douglas. Very interesting. 12 Germans. Chris was calling it, folks. Are you ready? Here's the Tom Clark's main event. Official uh, German suplex uh, 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 tally for the Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins match for WrestleMania 35. All right. So he's in with 12. What do you got? I'm going uh, I'm going uh, 14 for this match. I say 14 Germans. Nice, good number. What do you got? Naman says if Brock wins, we riot. No, Naman, you go sit on your couch and drink your soda and say, oh, well, and you go watch some more TV after that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you will. Maybe go burn your city down. I don't know. Uh, let's see. I'll probably go live, Miss Lopez, during Mania. I can't go live during TakeOver. I'll be riding during the entire thing. But Mania is going to be such a long show, I'll probably be taking breaks in there to watch some of the matches. Well, I mean, you know what I mean, to actually not type for a moment. It'd be tough to go live tonight. Uh, okay, so Jenna's got 15, Barry with 15, Chip with 13, Raymond says 10. Raymond being very conservative on this show. Jim says 16. Everyone's got to beat me, don't they? Got to top the old man, don't you? Okay. St- Stefan, yes, says 13. Uh, yes, Emma's supposedly a free agent. That's the rumor. Jess going 17. Brandon says 30. Okay, Brandon. We're not trying to kill Seth. Okay. We don't want to kill the guy. All right. Um, I'm going 14. German suplexes. Oh, you see the DOG? Yeah, there he is. There he is. He knows the word DOG. So if I say, actually say the word, he'll go, huh, what? And he'll come over here and want to get petted. He's a he's a lap DOG. You know what I'm saying? And he's a, kind of a bigger dude. He's not bigger. He's like medium size. But he loves the attention. Just like my cat loves the attention. For sure. So there you go. Jen says, no suplexes. Holy crap, Jen. Did you get to the pay Brock to show up and not do any of his tricks? Listen. When Brock does Brock smash, we all stand at attention and cheer. We don't really. I think we're all kind of sick of it, to be honest with you. But wouldn't it be something if you're right, Jim? How many curb stomps? Uh, 43. <laughs> Isn't it funny how they just start letting them do that move again and they don't care? Remember how the move was, it's too dangerous. It's much too dangerous. And now he does it all the time. Funny how things change. 25 duplexes. That's a lot of apartments there, Douglas. Same. I know what you mean. Naman with 33 suplex. Holy crap. You guys have gotten ridiculous with this stuff. All right, folks. We got two matches left, and I need a nap after this. So there you go. WWE Champion, the new Daniel Bryan versus Kofi Kingston. This match goes one of two ways. Kofi's going to win or he won't. Next match. (laughs) Don't be... Everyone's been saying Kofi Mania at me the entire hour. Are you happy now we're here? Jeez Louise. Uh, Everyone's saying Kofi. Um, so Flair could show up during Triple H Batista. Yeah, I don't know why. Help Batista win, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Um, Joshua's got Kofi. A lot of people got Kofi. Anna says Kofi. Um, this thing where the New Day are firmly in Kofi's side, and you're making me cry right now, man. You're making me cry, too. I love you. I love you, too, man. Let's hug and kiss. I'm just saying. That's great, and it's heartwarming, and it's fun to watch. This is WWE, and when that kind of emotion is displayed in WWE, people turn on each other for title shots. That's what's going to happen, okay? Whether it happens tomorrow or Sunday night, whether it happens on Tuesday night, it's going to happen at some point. Xavier, Big E, or maybe Kofi himself is going to turn heel out of this, okay? 
And if this were happening in New Japan, I wouldn't say that. If this were happening in any other company, I wouldn't say that. This is WWE, and they can't resist the freaking heel change, folks. They can't resist. They can't help themselves. they got to do it all the time with the heel change. All the time. If there's a plate glass window they can find, they're going to pitch them through it like Sean did with Marty. Okay? Because they love it. They can't stand it. they got to freaking have heel turns all the time. See that? There he is. Oh, there he is. <laughs> uh, okay. Shane says, you said this before, Shane. Shane, I got back to you, brother. Uh, Shane says, Cuffy wins and loses on Raw. Don't be surprised if he does. Cuffy wins, that means Becky might not win. To your point, yeah, we're all talking about it, so there we go. No bet, I did not hear that. I know Taker's going to be at the show. That's the rumor. So, folks, we got one match left. It's the main event. It's the first time. It's three women. It's what you've been waiting on. It's what you're sick of hearing about. You finally want to see it get over with. This is the winner take all. This is for both championship belts. I'm going to keep pointing my finger in your face till you get sick of it. Boom. So, um, Ronda Rousey, uh, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte Flair. Winner take all. Winner take all, fools. Okay? SmackDown Women's Championship. Raw Women's Championship. On the line, my friends, uh, in this match. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you think that this is going to go over real simple with the win, with the one, two, three, hey, hey, Bob's your uncle, uh, Becky's going to win the title, I think you're crazy. I don't see it going that simple. They have... Done what they can do, as I've said, I've copyrighted the phrase, you steal it, you owe me 10 bucks. They have, you know, they buried Kofi Kingston over 16 tons of crap and gave him a spoon to dig his way out. They've done that with Becky. Now, the, both people have emerged from said crap and are finally heads above the crap. Um, but they've done everything in their power to call Becky, um, uh, 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 to call Becky this, call Becky that, contender, not contender, uh, great, not great, doesn't deserve it, does deserve it, and also their hey, hey, nonsense. So, you know, at this point, I got to be honest with you, I'm looking at this thinking anything can happen. Now, here's the deal. <clears throat> Everyone listen, here's the deal. Get close. If you can't hear me, get close so I don't have to yell at you. Get close. So here we go. Um, WWE is going to do what they want to do. We've covered that, yes. They're, whatever they want to do. They have set this thing up for the baby faces to win. Kofi, Seth, and Becky. I wrote a piece about it. It's published this morning on Wrestling Rumors. Please go check it out. Please, please, and thank you. Um, in fact, it's called, what if WWE's top baby faces lose at WrestleMania 35? Um, I think they could, to be fair. I think they could. And I think one or more, or maybe all could. Um, um, and, and, and I know it's crazy and I know what you're thinking, Thomas is silly of you to even suggest this. This whole thing's been set up for the faces to get over. Um, but you know what? I got to be honest with you again, this is WWE we're talking about here, folks. Rousey's going to drop the title at some point. She's done after this. She announced it on her social media at this point. I think we're all ready for her and her great big old hairy husband to go on home. Uh, and that's no disrespect because Ron is just playing her part and I'm not hating on her at all. But the whole thing about, hey, let's bring your husband too and he can slap security guards and stuff. It just to me, and I'm just, I'm over it. I'm over that. Um, and at this point, she's hard to understand She's very comical, and I don't think she means to be. She has moments of being funny, and it's unintentionally funny. You know what I mean? She's very overdramatic at times, like she's playing a character and not being herself. If I'm reading this wrong, tell me, but that's kind of how I'm seeing it now. You know what I mean? Um, so we'll see. Bit, thanks for hanging out, man. Um, so yeah, yeah, Ron is gone after Mania. I don't know about t as of Monday. Maybe she'll be on Raw, but... She's going to take her leave of WWE. They're supposedly going to start a family, and that, you know, it could be months before we see her. I still say she'll be on SmackDown in the fall, but I could be wrong. I think Fox would want her there. So, uh, um, uh, let's see. First time ever, just not looking forward to WrestleMania. Anyone else feeling this way? Well, it does bring up an interesting point. And by the way, I'm going with Becky for the win. Don't know if it's going to happen, but that's who I'm going with. That's your WrestleMania card, folks. That's your TakeOver card. That's your G1 Supercard. Supercard card. <laughs> That's your G1 card. Okay. So, uh, uh, okay. So, how are we feeling? Someone just said they're not looking forward to Mania for the first time ever. A lot of people are saying that. I got to say, the build of WrestleMania 35 has been probably one of the worst builds I've ever seen. And, baby, I've seen every WrestleMania. Um, uh, so, people are still calling who they think are going to win. Uh, bu, 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 bu. yeah I, Jeff I'm with you why why do both belts makes no sense to me either I don't get that at all I don't think it needs to be winner take all I think it could have been 
that uh, if, in my opinion, it, it should have been if Charlotte wins the match, she keeps her title. If Ronda wins the match, she keeps her title. If Becky doesn't win the match, she gets nothing. Because it would have been the odds even more against Becky that the other two women have nothing to lose and everything to gain. They could have doubled up on Becky, double teamed her through the entire first half of the match and said, I don't care who wins, let's just destroy her. And then it would have been about, wait a minute, why is this match happening if they could just double team her the entire time, right? Wouldn't that make more sense? And then suddenly Charlotte accidentally hits Ronda or vice versa and they start brawling. But wouldn't it have made more sense to put Becky as at, at the at the point of no return where there's no way she can win and she's she's beat down again for how, how many times now through this entire storyline? Wouldn't that have made more sense? Jenna says it's the first man she's looking forward to since 30. Great. Well, there you go. Different, uh, different takes. So someone just mentioned the John Oliver piece. Um, I assume everyone's seen the video. I've been asked for my take and I've been saving it. But here's my quick take. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because we're going to take this show home uh, shortly. Um, but here's my take. I think John Oliver is a real wrestling fan, but I think he also used clips from 1997, which don't really apply to today. Um, not that the information supply from those years is wrong or incorrect or Bret Hart didn't feel that way or whoever didn't feel that way or this stuff, certain stuff didn't happen. I get it. But they picked apart Cole Cabana's podcast with CM Punk and took what they wanted to take from it and all this other stuff. And I'm just sitting there thinking, this is like 10 years too late. It's 20 years too late. Why didn't you talk about this stuff during the Attitude Era? Why didn't you care then when guys were dying left and right then? Why didn't you care then? Why do you care now? When guys are so much healthier. When nowadays, the 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 usual pro wrestling locker room and WWE, from everything I've been told, these guys are playing video games. They're on their phones looking at Facebook and, and Instagram. They're texting other people. They're not drinking, boozing it up, snorting cocaine in the bathroom. They're not coming to shows wasted. A lot of these guys don't even drink. Kenny Omega doesn't even drink, folks. I don't, I mean, I'm not in the locker room. I'm saying some of us don't drink at all and never have, folks, right here, okay? So, you know, to sit there and compare now to then, I think is a bit silly. And it's almost like they're going, we need a segment to fill. How about we bash pro wrestling? It's fun. I'm not taking up for WWE. You guys know, I've said this multiple times on the program before, I got a problem with someone who defends the billion dollar company. I'm not fan to WWE or anybody else. Vince has lost stuff to answer for that he's never answered for, folks. And hopefully one day he will, right? All I'm saying is, I just, I, I don't get where all this is coming from. It just feels too late. Yes, there were problems. Yes, there are still problems. No, no one's going to cheer and turn at WrestleMania 35 because you told them to. They paid a lot of money to be there, folks. They're not going to do that. I, I'd be shocked. And even if they did, you wouldn't be able to hear it anyway. It's a huge place. Just saying. Brandon says, uh, uh, Bray's returning to Raw after Mania. Would not disagree with that. I'm not saying I got a scoop because I don't, but I would say you, you might be right about that. So... Uh, yeah, different parrot character. Apparently, there's been shots of him. There's a video of him in the gym or something. And I don't want it to change too much. It worked. It worked for a long time. It could work again. Just tweak it like you did with The Undertaker. Just tweak it, right? You don't have to change it. Just tweak it. That's all. I like saying that. Catch up on that or what? Uh, Namaz says, what's my favorite WrestleMania? <laughs> Was it 19, Austin's last? That's a pretty good one. WrestleMania 20. WrestleMania 20. Eh, Goldberg and Brock Lesnar. That's a tough one. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite one, man. One that I could just watch over and over and over and over and over again. I don't know. I don't have a good one for you. I'm sorry. Uh, Cena's in town. He's in New York as well. Um, yep, yeah, Bray has a new baby on the way, right? Uh, do I think they will call up Tony Storm? Yes, I do with Victor at some point. Uh, Joe still believes it's going to be seen in Angle. I just don't know if I see that now. Genesis 17. WrestleMania 17 was a barn burner, that's for sure. Jason says, WrestleMania 1. I remember watching WrestleMania 1 when it happened. That's for sure. Huge moment. Uh, Let's see. I think we're getting ready to take this thing home, man. We'll be on the air almost an hour and a half. Uh, The audience is still there, but you know what? I'm tired. (laughs) I got other stuff to do. I got more stuff to write, baby. So we're going to start promoting here for just a second. Don't leave because i got other stuff to say to you. Uh, so don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Tom Clark writes. It'll be R-I-T-S. If you follow me on Twitter, I'll follow you back. If we're not friends on Facebook, send me a message on Wrestling Rumors Instant Messenger. 
and tell me, hey, Tom, send me a request and I'll send you one. If you just want to look me up, uh, I will definitely send you a friend request. If I can't, if the option's not there, I'll text you or I'll message you and let you know. Um, check out, uh, check me out on uh, WrestlingRumors.net, of course, ProWrestling.com, The Floor Seat, uh, Care of the Sports Daily.com, and also uh, TheChairShot.com. Uh, I'm writing a lot for ProWrestling.com right now. I'll be writing for them and posting updates tonight during the TakeOver show. Please feel free to come back to my page. You'll see the updates. Click on them and give them a read. I'll be posting tomorrow night during the G1 Supercard. And during WrestleMania night, I don't know who I'll be writing for that night, but I'll be definitely writing. I've not got that actual night planned out yet. Isn't that weird? But I'm booked up tonight and tomorrow night. So there we go. Yes, Joshua, let's see Taker versus Sting. Don't think it's ever going to happen. Um... I think that's what we got for you, man. We went almost an hour and a half today. I told you a big show. Hope everyone enjoyed it out there. To any of you first-time people that watch today, uh, please come back next week. Next uh, Friday, we're going to do the review of all three of these shows. We'll have all the match results for you and let you know how everything went and talk about the results, whether or not you were happy or sad, and if some of you hung yourself over the weekend. It's not very funny, but uh, it can be very frustrating. I'm just saying. Yes, everyone have a safe and fun weekend. 100% agree with that. Uh, thank you, Jen, as always, for watching. Namon, thanks for hanging out. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. And again, if you are listening right now because you listen to the show all the time, a big thank you to you as well. Um, uh, thank you, folks. And remember to check us out on iTunes. Subscribe and download. It will download to the device of your choosing. The show is free all the time, folks. I don't charge for this. Okay, so I appreciate it. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Please keep reading the columns, and I'll keep writing them, as they say. That's all we got for you, folks. Thanks a lot for hanging out. And we will see you next time on Tom Clark's Main Event.